and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is Teddy and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of another uh, Gigabyte GeForce GDX 960. This one is the uh, Windforce or I call it the 2X Windforce. Um, so this is the one with two fans, it's their middle model one, so one down from the uh, G1 Gaming and it looks to be quite solid actually, so that's one we're going to be talking about today. Now for you guys going, well why are you still doing GDX 960 stuff, we already covered this. Um, mainly because, as I said, if you go back and watch my previous showdown where we did the uh, G1 Gaming GDX 960 against the uh, 280X Windforce. And I obviously said in that showdown that uh, the 280X Windforce wins. Um, that is true, yes, the, the 280X is the better card, however, there's still a lot of appeal to the 960, which I went over, obviously, uh, not needing as much power supply, uh, other reasons as well, they don't produce as much heat, or anything else, overclock further, there's, there's a whole bunch of other reasons, so the 960 is still a good card, however, it's not very good for high resolutions, and if ultimate performance is your thing, then the 280X is better, but, as I said in the video, the 280X may win in full-on performance, but the 960 wins in about every other way. So that doesn't mean, you know, just because it lacks in one area, it doesn't mean it's a bad card. Um, so let's dive straight into this one then. So the GDX 960, as most of you probably know by now, runs the Maxwell GM206 GPU in it, which is a quite advanced, quite good GPU. Um, very solid for the most part. We're just going to take the card here. So that features 1024 CUDA cores. Uh, this one in particular is running at a base clock speed of uh, 1216 MHz and a boost of 1279, as always with GPU Boost 2.0. That will change. Now accessories, we just get uh, two Molex to 6 pin power adapters, which I mean this will be running twin 6 pins. And then we just get standard stuff like a manual and the driver CD, which you don't really need, just download uh, the latest drivers from NVIDIA's website, or you can just download NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which is a really good program, I really like GeForce Experience. Um, so that's good too. Now, it has 2 gigabytes, which as some people say, is a little bit too little, of GDDR5 on a 128-bit memory bus. This is what this guy looks like. See, it's a cut down. Or quite a bit more cut down over the G1 Gaming. And that's at 7,010 megahertz. So, uh, we've talked about this memory quite a few times now. Basically, um, the 2 gigabytes, it's okay. Um, but, yeah, it's not perfectly ideal. When the video is going on about this card, will do 1080p maxed out. Like, no worries. Um, as we showed in the showdown, you know, there's some games at 1080p which uses more than 2048 megabytes of video memory. Uh, so it's not really enough, but it, it'll do, it does a decent, you know, it's a decent amount still. Um, but you're probably not going to be able to max out every 1080p game and get over 60 frames a second um, with this little guy here. But definitely if you turn out some of the filters or something. Now, 120 watt TDP on this uh, Maxwell GPU, so very, very efficient. Um, this is what we've talked about multiple times. Incredibly power efficient, incredibly uh, thermally efficient. These are just really good in that sense. Very advanced GPU in it. Um, so it has this third uh, generation Delta Color Compression, which we talked about. That's basically an improved memory uh, compression and caching, which makes up for its little 128-bit bus. It has a dynamic super resolution or super sampling anti-aliasing, which renders the scene at a higher resolution and downscales it for better graphics. Uh, MFAA, which is a more efficient version of MSAA, VXGI illumination technique. Okay, so standard NVIDIA, as you guys are probably aware, uh, triple display port, single HDMI port, uh, DVI-D, DVI-I. So, pretty standard there. Uh, you're going to be able to do triple G-Sync monitors on this if you really want to. HDMI 2.0, which means 4K at 60 hertz if you really want to do that. And of course, uh, DVI-I and DVI-D, which you guys are probably all familiar with by now. Now, the power requirement is a 400 watt power supply for this guy. So, that's really good. That means people that have lower end power supplies will not need to upgrade. This is something I did touch on in the showdown, if you remember. Um, that, you know, with the 280X, they might have to upgrade their power supply with this guy, you won't. 
So yeah, just uh, twin six pin power connectors and a single SLI finger, only two way SLI uh, capable on this guy. Now the cooler. So obviously this is kind of like the new Gigabyte Windforce Cool, except it's got two fans. These are twin 19mm fans with their new fan design, which they say improves airflow while also reducing air turbulence, which means there's less fan noise. It has three copper uh, heat pipes coming out the top here, you can see, and round at the bottom. And the airflow is split through the triangle design at the fan edge, and it's guided smoothly through the fan by special 3D stripe curved design. At the same time, it effectively enhances the cooling capacity while reducing air turbulence, which is what we were talking about just before, so that's these new fan design on them. And this one also features the Zero Dispel fan technology, which um, is a pretty cool feature. The, these fans will just not turn on when it's below a certain temperature or below a, d a certain load, so that's a good thing to have also. Um, but the, these cars like this that are so efficient barely make any noise to begin with, so... But, but it's still good anyways. This doesn't have the GPU gauntlet that the G1 Gaming does, so these uh, GPUs in them aren't as binned as the ones in the uh, G1 Gaming, in theory anyways. Now it has the ultra durable VGA, which means lower GPU temperatures and uh, better, uh, better overclocking, that's in theory as well, just upgraded components. It's just a cleaner power to the GPU itself. No backplate on this guy, unlike the uh, G1 Gaming. So yeah, that has that. It has a lot of similarities to the G1 Gaming, but you know, obviously a slightly cut down version. The G1 Gaming is the top model, and Highways is coming in at 43 millimeters tall, uh, 257 millimeters long. So this guy's gonna fit in absolutely everything. The G1 Gaming is quite a long card, so this one will definitely fit in all your mid towers, um, no worries at all. And width wise is coming in at 114 millimeters. I think this would fit in some mini ITX cases as well, although the lowest end gigabyte GTX 960 model, which we will get to soon, uh, that's going to fit in everything because that's just a single fan design. So this one will be quite interesting. I'm interested to see what the cooling performance is like compared to the G1 Gaming, just how much difference there is. In New Zealand, there's not that much price difference. But uh, that's what we'll be testing out to see if this cools as efficiently, you know, is it really that much of a middle card or, you know, how much difference is there really between the different models of uh, Gigabyte GTX 960s. And that's going to round out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown so you catch my next GPU showdown, which will be coming up quite soon, as soon as it drops. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time.